welcome back. I now want to talk about something that's called the small gain theorem. And this can be used to prove stability of a feedback loop, but in a slightly more general setting than we've been considering so far. So, so far we've been con just assuming that the top component, G1 here, was a linear system, and it was in feedback with some static nonlinearity. But actually I'm going to talk to you about the small gain theorem in a slightly more general context, where, say, these could both be linear systems, or they could both be static nonlinearities, or in fact, they could both be general nonlinear systems. And we're going to give a theorem for um, proving stability of this setup, it's called the small gain theorem, and it will also hint to generalizations and extensions of the ideas that we've seen so far. So in fact, the fact that we've presented the passivity theorem, and we've presented the circle criterion in the setting that this term was linear, and this was a static nonlinearity, this was a slight um, oversimplification or a slight restriction. We could have stated things in the more general setting. It turns out that the linear in feedback with uh, static nonlinear is an extremely useful general case, so it doesn't really hurt to focus in on this situation in particular. But the tools can be applied in more generality, and I just want to give you a, a bit of a flavour for that while also um, talking about the small gain theorem. Uh, so to begin, let's just assume we are in the setting where G1 is linear and G2 is a static nonlinearity, and we're going to be in the special case that the static nonlinearity lies in a sector where we have slope gamma and minus gamma. So we lie in this nice symmetric um, sector, and the way I want you to start thinking about this is we're going to say that the static nonlinearity has gain uh, less than or equal to gamma. So how might we sort of understand that? Well, the nonlinearity lies in the sector, and if we just, you know, let's just label this signal u tilde. So our, our static nonlinearity would be saying that u tilde is equal to h of um, y. So g2 in this case is just um, some nonlinearity h. And one way to capture this idea that it, this has uh, gain less than or equal to gamma is to say that u tilde squared minus gamma squared y squared is less than or equal to zero. So no matter what, what we put in for y, we'll always get something that's, that has absolute value um, less than gamma. And so this uh, inequality here will hold. And this is a sort of a more formal way of saying that um, this static nonlinearity has gain less than gamma. OK, so we'll just sort of put that to one side and now go back to applying the circle criterion. So we have this specific nonlinearity. Uh, what does this require of our linear uh, system G1? Well, the circle we have to draw, we have to put in both of the minus 1 over k points, and in this case it corresponds to minus 1 over gamma and 1 over gamma, and we draw our circle like this, and the circle criterion says, we're in case 2, that we have to avoid this exterior circle here. So the circle criterion demands that G1 of j omega, so the Nyquist diagram of our transfer function, lies inside this circle, 1 over gamma, with radius 1 over gamma. And now we have kind of another idea of system gain, and this time the condition seems to be uh, that the maximum or yeah, the maximum over frequency of the absolute value of g of j omega is less than uh, gamma. So we could say that this transfer function has gain less than gamma if this holds. And so we have these sort of two different notions of gain, and we know that if we satisfy this notion and this notion, we'll get stability um, by the circle criterion. And the small gain theorem is essentially this. Uh, so what does the small gain theorem say? Theorem. It tells us it tells us that this feedback interconnection, uh, so the equilibrium point is globally asymptotically stable if 
g1 has gain less than uh, yeah, less than or equal to, or well, it doesn't matter, we can do it either way around. Gamma and g2 has gain less than 1 over gamma. Or alternatively stated, the product of the gains of g1 and g2 is less than 1. So this is the small, the small gain theorem, and we can see from the circle criterion that it's true if g1 is um, a transfer function of a linear system and g2 is a static nonlinearity. But actually it holds in more generality. Um, so for example, we could have two linear time invariant systems, and then using this notion of gain, provided this holds, we'd have stability. And how can we see this? Well, if we take our alternative uh, statement that the product of the gains must be less than 1. So what does that tell us? It tells us that the Nyquist diagram, so if these are both linear time invariant systems, if they both, if, well, if they satisfy the property that the gain of the first one multiplied by the gain of the second one is less than 1, well, that means that the Nyquist diagram of g1 of j omega times g2 of j omega must lie inside some circle that has got radius less than 1. So this is what it means to have gain less than a certain number for a linear system. If the product of these is less than 1, it means the Nyquist diagram must lie in a circle that's got size less than 1. And now we can straight away see that we'll get stability by the Nyquist stability criterion. There's no way for this Nyquist diagram to encircle the minus one point, so we can't change uh, the number of encirclements, and so we can't change stability between open and closed loop. Um, so you can now sort of see by a simple Nyquist argument that the small gain theorem is holding even if we have something linear here and something linear here. And in fact, something more general holds. We can actually have something nonlinear here and something nonlinear here, as long as they both have. Uh, if, as long as the gain in the feedback loop is less than 1. And so this is what the small gain theorem buys you, and this is really what happens when you try to generalise these ideas of circle criterion and passivity theorem uh, beyond the setting which we've seen them, uh, in which we've seen them so far. So what is an appropriate uh, generalisation of gain? Well, we want something that sort of generalises the flavour of these two things. Um, and actually, once again, this generalization comes through the KYP lemma. So I don't know if you remember, but when we um, used our KYP argument um, to prove uh, stability using through the passivity theorem, when we did our calculations, we showed that V dot was equal to something minus y transpose u. And um, then th this turned out to be less than or equal to 0, like this. And uh, th it was through this argument that we were able to prove uh, stability. So we had something here that was guaranteed to be less than 0 um, by the uh, KYP lemma. And this thing here was less than or equal to 0 by properties of the static nonlinearity. Um, and we're actually going to, the generalization of the notion of gain is something that looks a little bit like this. So, so generalization of gain. And this is uh, a notion of gain that picks up both of these definitions, uh, or both of these ideas before, and actually gives you something that applies to uh, systems of the form x dot is equal to f of x u and y is equal to g of x u. And in particular, we say that such an input output system now um, is said to be said to have gain less than gamma or less than or equal to gamma if so gain less than, let's just do less than, let's do less than or equal to gamma. If there exists a Lyapunov 
function, and actually these are not typically called Lyapunov functions uh, anymore. They're actually called storage functions. But it's kind of the same thing. It's just another, we even use the same notation, v of x, and it has the same properties. It has to be equal to 0 when we put x equal to our equilibrium point, and it has to be greater than 0 everywhere else. So uh, our, our general system here has gain less than or equal to gamma if there exists a storage function v such that v dot minus, um, and then what do we say? Uh, we, we have to use this. What do we say? Y transpose Y minus gamma squared U transpose U is less than zero. So, um, or equivalently, V dot is less than Y transpose Y minus gamma squared U transpose U. And so th this is our generalization of the notion of gain. If our system satisfies this property here, it's said to have gain less than gamma. And now we see that this is picked up by both of our, um, uh, it, it generalizes this and it generalizes this through the KYP lemma um, again. And there's a more general version of the KYP lemma that in fact applies to general um, equations of this form. And this thing here also has a name. This is typically called the supply. And the way to start thinking about this is that V is corresponds to the amount of stored energy, if you like, um, and in order to prove things like stability through feedback arguments here, we need that the supply is less than, is always greater than the storage. Um, and there's generalized notions of passivity that also take this form. So a generalization of the definitions of passivity that we've seen so far, or um, strictly positive real transfer functions into the nonlinear setting, we just use different values of the supply. So passivity for more general systems corresponds to v dot being less than or equal to um, u transpose y now. And this is like the power uh, supplied to your system. And if you, when you take passivity examples, typically your storage function is actually corresponding to physical energy that's being stored in your system. Whereas this is more just an, an abstraction of these ideas in the same way that a Lyapunov function is an abstraction of the idea of an energy function. So here you just have a sort of a very, so the main messages here is we have this small gain theorem that we can apply in a more general setting. Um, so we're not restricted to have linear and feedback with static nonlinearity. Um, but in order to apply it in the more general setting, we need, need a more general notion of gain. And this is um, a notion that takes our idea of a Lyapunov function into the input-output setting. And when we do that, we replace normal inequalities on Lyapunov functions with inequalities on storage functions and supplies. And in fact, the same argument can be used to take our idea of passivity into a more general setting and indeed many other notions into more general settings. Um, so this is really to just sort of give you a flavor as much as anything else, as well as to tell you about this, um, this important intermediate result called the small gain theorem, which you may have uh, cause to use.